Hey guys, welcome back. Wow, it feels like ages since you guys have seen me and that I'm sitting in front of you. If you've been watching the last couple of weeks, you'll know that I've been using some different faces. Just because my skin's so dry, it's almost impossible to film with makeup, to even use makeup. So I've been treating you guys to some different looks with different faces. I will obviously still be back on my channel, I just have to do it when there's a few days where I'm not using my skincare so my skin softens again and that it can actually take makeup. But don't worry, it's all only very temporary and I'm back today. Today is the 1st of February, I'm not sure when this is going to go up. I've got some new products that I want to use. So let's get on with today's tutorial. I'm going to start with this new Professional Light by Benefit. If you are familiar with Benefit, you'll know that they already do an original of this and they do a pearl version and this is the light version. The original one is quite thick. This one has a little bit of a pinky hue to it. The original one is more of a creamy colour. The main difference with this one is obviously it is lighter. So although it still has that kind of silicone feel, it's a lot softer. Um, it's not as intense. So if you like the original, you might still want to stick with that. But if you want something that still is going to smooth out and blur the appearance of your fine lines, wrinkles and pores, then give this one a try. It feels a lot wetter. It's still quite thick as you can see when it comes out, but when it goes on, it's got this very nice cooling effect to the skin. Um, the original one doesn't really do that. And again, they've got the pearl kind of finish one. So if you're looking for something with a little bit of luminosity to it, then you might want to try the pearl one. It's lovely, but it's just not for me. For foundation, I'm going to use the Beautiful Skin by Charlotte Tilbury. I've already used this once. I don't know if the tutorial has already gone up, but I used this one on my sister-in-law-to-be crystal. I've been using this for a couple of weeks now and it's really nice. The shade I've got is 5 Neutral. I could probably do with a 4 and mix the 2 um, because obviously it's the winter and I've got no colour. This is so lovely. If you want something that looks just like skin, try this. So this foundation comes in around 30 shades. It is a medium coverage, I've got it in my hair. It's a medium coverage and it's buildable. It's definitely more hydrating than any of the other foundations that I've tried from Charlotte Tilbury. Originally I was put off at the idea of using this foundation because it said glow, and as you know, I don't like to glow too much because I'm oily. Um, and this, has the most beautiful natural glow and you can definitely powder through the center i find it lasts perfectly well on my oily skin as long as i prep it correctly using something like the professional in the areas that i tend to get oily works perfect for me i've only been using it quite lightly as i say it does say it's a medium but i feel like when i kind of bounce a damp sponge over it it gives me more of a sheer coverage because you can still see my skin but you can still see freckles and this does contain hyaluronic acid. So as you know, hyaluronic acid will draw moisture from the air. So the idea is it plumps your skin throughout the day. So while you're wearing this, you definitely will not get dry skin um, and your skin will just feel hydrated while wearing it. So that's one layer. And as you can see, it has taken down a lot of the redness in my skin because my skin has been so dry. Um, every time I put stuff on, it gets even more red and it takes a while to go down. But this has done a nice job considering it is such a light layer. Um, I've got a little cut here. My skin has been so dry that it kind of tore the other day when I was eating crisps. I'm going to go in the second layer purely because we are in such bright lighting. Usually I find that one layer is absolutely fine in the day, but because we are in such strong lighting, I feel like I could take another layer and it will still look nice and natural. So I am going to buff a little bit more on through the center of the face and then work that outwards. I don't necessarily need fuller coverage all over. As long as it's buffed in well and you blend it out towards the edges, you can apply a little bit more just through the center. The brush I'm using, as you know, is a firm favorite. I actually have a few of them. Um, this is the Heavenly Luxe Complexion Perfection Brush by It Cosmetics. It's not cheap, but it's one of those ones that once you've got it, it will last you forever. It's easy to clean. The only thing that I don't like is because it is dual ended, I can't use my brush cleaner with it, the one that spins by Style Pro and I love to use that because it really does get everything out of the brush but I have a couple of really good soaps that I use specifically for makeup cleaning um, and these come up beautifully it's just that I like the convenience of being able to use the brush cleaner. I'm going to buff a little bit of what's left on my hand I've still got half a pump on there but I probably won't need it um, I'm going to use a little bit of the other side to press that over my pores on my nose because that gives me a really lovely airbrushed finish to the skin. So this does say that it's a 16 hour wear foundation. I have worn it all day and it stayed in place really nice, um, especially considering it was such a light layer. So it definitely has good durability. 
I haven't tested it for 16 hours. I don't tend to wear my makeup that long, so I can't vouch for how long it does last. However, that one layer that I've worn has lasted really well. That could be down to the fact that I tried it while having slightly drier skin. I've not been able to fully put it through its paces having oily skin while I'm wearing the retinol at the moment, but I will test it in the summer when I'm coming down off of the retinol. At the moment, I really like it. I'm just gonna pin my hair up into a little bun so it's not in the way. Having it done tomorrow. Looking forward to it feeling a little bit fresher again. That will do. I've got all these tiny little baby hairs coming through again at the moment and they look worse because I've just washed my hair so they go <sighs> through the centre of the face I'm going to press a little bit of the Charlotte Tilbury Airbrush Flawless Powder just to take down some of the shine. I'm thinking I might work with some creams so I don't want to completely powder the sides of my face just yet so I'm just going to do the T-section. I'm going to press that onto the side of my face. Here you can see it's very very shiny and I've just done this side which is completely matte and it's so good at minimising the appearance of your pores so just press that onto the areas that you want to minimize the shine and also the appearance of pores and fine lines. It has the rose wax in this which I feel is obviously contributing to giving that beautiful kind of like finish to the skin but it doesn't look heavy it's so so good. So I'm just going to press this onto the forehead as well. So I'm going to do my brows off screen using my Urban Decay brow blade and then I will get on with the eye makeup and come back and finish the skin. Today I'm using the Bobbi Brown Golden Illusion Eyeshadow Palette. This was part of the 2021 Christmas collection and I'm starting with this warm tone brown called Golden Light and I'm using a Morphe M453 blending brush which has synthetic bristles. Starting this like most eyeshadow looks, we're popping this colour straight into the socket of the eye. This is going to be our transitional shade which means it's the first colour that we lay down and it's the one that tends to go the highest and this is the shade that we blend all other eyeshadows on top of and into. Then I'm taking a smaller brush which is more like a detailer brush, this is the Morphe M124 and I'm going into Gold Bar Sparkle which is more like a frosted champagne so the idea is that it's less of a colour payoff, it's more of a shimmery tone so you do need to build this up quite a bit so a few layers on top of one another should really start to give you that champagne tone but it is quite a sheer eyeshadow. The sparkle in this is slightly more obvious or a little bit more chunky than say like a satin finish which still gives you a sheen but all of Bobbi Brown's eyeshadows are so beautiful you'll never have something that's super chunky or falling down. That colour is going on the inner corners of the eyes and most of the way across the mobile lid. The next shade I'm taking is called Sandstone Shimmer and this is a metallic finish. This is like a lovely minky brown and I'm placing this on the outer third of the mobile lid using a tapping motion to kind of bring it towards the centre of the lid and again I'm still using that same Morphe detailer brush. It's actually just a flat eyeshadow brush but it's quite small and it reminds me of my favourite detailer brushes by Zoeva but this one's just a little bit bigger. I'm going to start using the tip of the brush to extend the eyeshadow out in a bit of a V shape but we're not taking it any higher than the highest point of the socket line. Instead we'll go back in with our transitional shade on that blending brush just back through the socket to make sure there's no seams. Next we're going into this shade called Burnt Umber which is a metallic shade and again kind of using the tip of the brush and a little bit of the belly of the brush we're going to pat that on the very outer quarter of the mobile lid. Then using what's left on the bristles we're going to feather the colour out into that sandstone shade that we already applied in the V shape. And then as I said go back in with your blending brush that's got the transitional shade left on it and make sure there's no harsh seams. It's also good to look directly straight into a mirror because you might want to take a little bit of that through the centre of your socket line. Going into the deepest shade in the palette called Modern Symphony, we're taking that with a damp eyeliner brush and we're going to create a liner from the very inner corner towards the outer edge and I've chosen to use the eyeshadow because it's a lot softer than using an actual eyeliner and you can also buff this in if you decided you didn't like it. I've chosen lashes that are mostly longer in the centre. These are called So Real by Kiss. They're beautiful and they're very lightweight and I've chosen longer in the centre because we're not creating a winged out look. So this shape is a little bit more appropriate and it suits more eye shapes. So this is how it looks before mascara and I find if you apply it before mascara it's a little bit easier to butt it right up against the root of your natural lash. 
I also like to tight line the eye before I go in with the mascara again it just makes it easier and then I'm going to use a little bit of the full fat lashes by Charlotte Tilbury this is just a sample size but it lasts so long and it's a really nice black mascara I have bought the full version of this before but I decided not to repurchase because there are other ones out there that I like more but it is a great mascara still this part is completely optional, you don't have to do this. I'm taking the Coffee Pencil by MAC three quarters of the way along my lower eyelash line. And then I'm blending some of the sandstone shimmer underneath the lower eyelashes. I decided to take the gold bar sparkle along the tear duct area. And then I'm taking a very sharp angled brush by Illa Masca and dipping that into the Modern Symphony eyeshadow and I'm running that underneath the tear duct. This is a look that I used to do years ago and I really like it because it's a nice way to open up the eyes so you can still wear eyeliner but it doesn't make your actual eyes look too small. So the idea is to drop the eyeshadow down by about a millimeter and a half below your tear duct. So I just added some contour to my face press record so I went in with the Kat Von D shade and light palette in the powder form so we've got a few different shades here for contouring we've got some highlight shades this also comes in a cream form but I've gone with the powder and I've used this shade around the perimeter of my forehead I've taken that down the contours of the cheekbones making sure not to take it much further than being in line with the pupil of the eye brush that upwards and I've also taken some in the temple because it gives the illusion that this area and this area are slightly more sunken which makes this area which is your cheek Bone more prominent so make sure you just take it into these areas and around the circumference of your forehead the brush I'm using is by Morphe this is the contour brush it's the E4 brush and it's so so soft I'm taking a small amount of my instant under eye concealer by AU this is really really run low now I'm gonna pop a little bit what's left on it on my brush I need to get another one it's lasted so long and this is just going into this little dip on my eye just to lift the appearance of that little sunken area. Go back into my Charlotte Tilbury powder and my sponge. I'm going to place a little bit more of this over the skin just to mattify. And this is just going through the T-section. For blush today, I'm gonna to use this one by Stila. This is the Convertible Color, which is a cream. You can use it on your cheeks, lips, eyes. It's a little bit different to my usual blush choice. I like peachy tones, but I'm sure you're sick of seeing them. So I'm gonna use something different today. This will go nice with the eye makeup as well. So bounce your brush on the top or your sponge and then just dab it off on the back of your hand and then use what's left on the bristles to put that color on because you don't want it to be super intense. These are really creamy, so they give a lovely finish to the skin. And what I love about using cream products, and I keep telling you over and over again, is because they give a really lovely dewy finish to the skin. And when I say dewy, it's more like a glassy shine rather than shimmery particles, because these don't have shimmery particles in. They give this beautiful glow to the skin that doesn't require a highlighter. I think if you had a highlighter on top of this, it would just be too much. This is a really nice finish. I'm just going to use what's left on my concealer brush just to pull that down a little bit towards the blush so it adds a really nice kind of blend between the two just finish off with a little bit of powder on your sponge just to finish the skin I'm really big on multi-use products because it just means your kind of makeup look looks very cohesive it's a bit more monochromatic the whole look comes together um, and creams means you can use it everywhere so I am going to use this on the lips as well it might be a little bit dark for my liking but it has a bit more of a peachier tone to it than you anticipate and I don't like a lot on the lips so this should be ideal as always guys thank you so much for watching I hope you enjoyed the tutorial come follow me outside of YouTube over on Instagram and I will see you next week bye guys